Um, hey guys, and welcome back. Um, today, I'm gonna try to work on showing you how I was weathering my Walther's Dash 8. Um, had a few people say that they really liked how it turned out, and I do too. Let me see if I can get that light to cooperate. And, um, today we have in front of you the, um, my SD9, which we will be weathering the same way. Um, first thing, I took a pencil and grinded it up, and that's all pencil lead. Um, you can go to Hobby Lobby and get, say, a lead stick or such. Um, they sell that, just grind it up and into powder. This I just used a pencil and I was rubbing it back and forth on this piece of sandpaper, and it did that. I'm um, not sure exactly what grit that is. It's it's a heavier grit sandpaper though. So I mean, I was rubbing on it with the pencil and it didn't lose any sand at all. I mean, when you look in there, there might be a little bit of sand in there, but you know. Um, next thing is a brush. Um, I have two different brushes here. Um, I'm gonna use them. I'll end up using them both, but probably not the bigger one because I've actually painted with it, and it's a little hard. And then I have this third brush, which is out like that, and it's just to run over the finished product and to remove any trash. So, first, just want to wipe this into a nice pile at the bottom. And then, just going to dip into it like that. And as you can see, it sticks right on there to it. And then first, you want to go over the areas where you have exhaust like the exhaust pipe you might be able to see some smoke coming off um, that's normal and I'm just gonna run backwards this way to here and on this particular locomotive um, you're not gonna see it as well because of the black you're not gonna see it too well until we get to the we get to the spot where it's green but I mean I can see it um, in person it's a little hard I don't think the camera is going to pick it up that well but um, good dusting of the roof roof is um, a big exhaust spot a lot of exhaust gets on the roof I'm trying to watch out for the hole that I have cut in the middle for the beacon when I get finished and when I get the beacon on there, I will run a little bit over that too. And that's about it. Um, as you can see, now you see the spots where it looks like it's been hit with a pencil. And the, the phone that I have right now, um, really, it really wants to pick it up. And it really does um, pick it up. It doesn't really look that bad like that in person, only under the light. When it's actually sitting on the layout, it actually looks really good. Um, next, we're going to turn the locomotive over and try to set this up so you can see what I'm doing when it's flipped over like that. If I can get something to hold it up like that, that would be nice. Let me see if I can slide something under the phone and hold it up. There we go. That looks good. Um... I really wish y'all could see the big thing that I have built up for the phone, um, and the phone's actually being held onto this big tube by a rubber band, then I have batteries at the end of the tube that are holding it up, but, I mean, not, not much to talk about. Okay, we're gonna run a little bit through the grills. As you can see, some fell down, which is alright, because all of this that fell down, just wanna run back and forth, do there. Now, and I want to tell you that when you start doing this, I'm just going to run a little bit back and forth across there. And it's going to really start bringing out the locomotive. Um, I'm trying to see if that's better to show it up. And you want to get any grills. You want to get the grills really good. Because that, one, they're going to pick up the... Um, the graphite will stick into that really good. And two, 
and only there's exhaust and grills. So I'm gonna hit the dynamic brakes and get the walkway because I know some fell down there. Um, it's always good to get the exhaust real good um, and the vents. Like not not only because you can because it shows up good, but because like I said, it really goes in there. Um, turn the lights back on. It should show. Maybe I can't tell which one's better, but I'm gonna leave it like that because this one looks better to me. Um, hit the grill one more time. I wish it would quit going down there so I could hit the top of the locomotive a little bit. I'm trying to brush it up and out and get a little bit in there. Um, it does a really good job of bringing out the um, little door latches and stuff that you normally would overlook and kind of blend into the paint. Um, as you can see, this door right here, this is the door. It's actually opened. Um, it's, I actually glued it open because it would, all the shaking would actually close it. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit on that. And down through here. And it's really going to start to bring that stuff out too. It's amazing what just just this type of weathering will do. I mean, this type of weathering is nothing compared to what what other stuff is, and it may not be the best way, but it really does bring the locomotive out. It brings out some of the things about the locomotive and some of the nice smaller details that even like Bachmann locomotives, doing this to a Bachmann locomotive will make it look better. And, of course, get the logos good, especially when you have white logos. Anything white, get it real good. It always looks better when you do. And, of course, on the white, it's going to show up really good. And then I want to hit these battery boxes here real good. And then something I normally don't get to do, because this is the only high hood unit I have, um, I have to hit the high hood. And that front door there. Okay, I gotta flatten it back out so that I can get that there and get a good weathering on that high hood. And I think it looks pretty good. Um, This locomotive particularly does not want to take the graphite as well, but it's graphite, it's meant for drawing on stuff, it's going to take it no matter what. Um, some locomotives will take it better than others, as you saw on my Dash 8, it took it extremely well. This locomotive does not want to take it as well, but like I said, um, it's graphite, it's going to get, get it. And even hit the windows a little bit. I mean, exhaust sticks on everything, including the windows. So I would, I would say hit the windows a little bit. And, I mean, make it look right. And up on the roof, I forgot to hit the horns real good. And that's about it for this much right here. It's the side of the locomotive. Let's see if that will bring some of it out and show it to you. But, no, okay. I think it's starting to turn out pretty good. I'm going to go back to the number boards again, or what would be the number board. Like I said, it doesn't seem to want to take it that well. And sometimes, um, you may have learned this in elementary school, that if you put a little bit on your finger, and then rub your finger on it, it will, your finger will smear the lead dust which actually worked quite good in this case and normally does um, hit the fuel tank and it, it's almost pointless to do the trucks trucks normally don't take it and I mean like I said these are not taking much they are taking a little bit so I'll 
I hit him up. Um, I didn't mention this, but this is a Proto 2000 model. Um, and it's turning out really good with the weathering. I like it. I think it's turning out pretty good. And in my mind, it is, at least. Um, on, on some of these spots where you want it to be dark, I've seen that using my finger working a lot. And like I said, you want to get the white spots good. Because, I mean, that's where you're obviously going to see the dust. And now that BN logo, may not be able to see it as well. I'm going to pick it up and show you. But I think it looks really good now. This is what we have so far. Um, look over on this side over here. Um, it seems to be picking it up better off to that side. So that's it. Well, that's not it, but, you know. Let's see if I can pick up the front so that you can see it. There, that should be good. I'm going to... And sometimes I would recommend you take off the handrails if it makes it easier. But these handrails are tough. And they don't even want to come off. They're actually tough enough. I can probably keep them on there. Now you want to hit high. Um, with this type of weathering, you don't really need to avoid the headlight. And I'm not going to pay any particular attention to the headlight itself. And then most of it will actually bring itself right down over that. And then looks like the decals are going to want the finger technique. Which sometimes you may need to do. And see how where the bend in the unit, the bend in the unit is going to pick it up really good. Where, where any turns, where the plastic turns, that's always going to pick it up the best. And that's okay. Um, that's real stuff that happens in real life. So. Um, I would suggest doing it. Um, I got a little bit on my brush that time. A little bit too much. And coming together quite nicely. Um, I'm going to turn on the light so I can see a little bit better. I'm actually getting a lot of brush. Um, a lot of it's actually escaping and getting over here on the side of this long hood, which is fine. Turn it a little bit like that so I can get that corner. And that ladder is picking it up really good. Hey guys, let me cut this light off, and I'll bring it up here, so you can see. Okay, doesn't want to pick it up, and I'm going to try to hit that a little bit harder and get, get the lines a little bit darker. Okay, I think it might be able to pick it up now. If not, let me do this, and might be able to see it. There. I got that light off on my phone. Now you should be able to see the dark, darkness of it. My phone light is causing some problems. Let's see if I can fix that real quick. There we go. That should help. A little bit. Now for lighting, we'll use this light. And then to show you how it looks, let me do this. You should be able to see that that looks good. And we'll let you see the side again. There we go. I think that's showing up a lot better now. And just so you can see the roof again, um, 
now I think you can see it a little bit better and we're gonna once again turn it on its other side and go ahead to work um brushed out with my finger a little bit a minute ago I got a little overexcited Yeah, the, the natural light in my room sucks. I'll try to see if I can bend this around, though, so that it's not glaring it. So you can see what I'm working on directly. And I actually got a little bit more than I wanted. And that's okay. If you get more than you want, just brush it along the side like that. And, I mean, you can never really have too much because locomotives get really dirty sometimes. It's the nature of the beast. So, I said just brush it away, and once again take your finger and smear it a little bit around the logo, and like I said, this was a trick I learned in elementary school, um, doing this on paper, taking my finger and smearing it, and I'm glad my four, uh, third grade elementary school teacher or art teacher did this with me because it is very helpful get the trucks like I said um, they don't pick up a lot but what they do pick up looks good and that you can see pretty well how that is picked it up so Keep on working. I haven't gotten to the long hood yet. Let's continue to work. I'm going to bring this forward a little bit so it's going to be more in the bottom of the camera. I'm going to turn my thing up a little bit more. I actually have it pointed at the camera. Yeah, that, should, that looks pretty good. Um, Starting to run a little low on what you call it. I wish it would have ground up a little bit more. I don't know how good you can see that, but that actually turned out pretty good. Yeah, that, that looks good. I think you can see that. Now I'll have pictures on the um, YouTube Model Railroaders Facebook page about this. Or of this locomotive now that it's almost finished. And so far, I'm actually kind of happy. It's turning out pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Um, I learned this weathering technique from my buddy Dave. Um, if you're a YouTube model railroader, you probably know Dave. If you ever do the hangouts, Dave does a lot of those. Um, he's normally on a little bit earlier, and I, for, I forgot to say this, um, try to hit the handrails a little bit, not much, handrails don't pick up that much, dirt, um, via this type of, um, dirt, but they still do, so, like I said, just try, try to get a nice coat over all the little door latches, and such um, and they pull out a lot of it and I'm actually using the light because yes the light is dulling it for y'all but for me it's actually um I can see I can actually see the little shavings and see what I've gotten and what I haven't I'm trying to get those vents really good like I said Oh, I got a lot on there that time. Then there's also a bunch of little latches and hinges down there, too, so I want to make sure I get them. Um, let's bring that back up. And I think that looks pretty good. I haven't hit up the back yet. So here we go. So just deliberately put a little bit on my finger here. And 
it's hard to do this because I'm putting it on my left hand and I'm not left handed so I'm doing this with my left hand it's a little harder than I wish it was but it's working really good I'm liking how it's coming out um let's go ahead and hit up the back trucks Notice that it really only picks it up in the actual wheel casings. It only really picks it up in these um, wheel casings here. It doesn't really pick it up on the side like you'd expect it would. And now we have the back of the unit to do. And like I, uh, I noticed before, that it, it took a few tries before it started looking the part, but then it eventually started to look the part. It started to look really good, and I remember I... And I mean, it doesn't look it, but I'm trying to be as careful as I can. And actually, back over here, I forgot to do these grills. And these, you actually want to, like, take the actual powder and put it in the grills. Makes it look pretty good. And get the fuel tank a little bit better. And the air cylinders down there. There we go. Looks better. And then up on the roof here, you want to get all these little vents. But with these, being that these are see-through vents, you need to be very careful on anything like that. Especially if you're seeing through right into the engine compartment. The graphite will actually help the engine. will actually help the motor. And it's actually graphite as a lubricant. So, um, it's actually really good for lubing the couplers. It's actually very good for the couplers. If you have a coupler that sticks, um, or like a coupler spring, little springs in the KDs that stick, um, it's actually really good for those. These are KD158s. They're whisker scale head couplers. Really nice couplers. I like them. Um, really nice locomotive. It's, like I said, coming out really good. Um, going on 23 minutes, I think. Doing this. And just about have a finished product. Um, it, it's easy to show that, I mean, and this is just household stuff. I mean, normally people have a sandpa sandpaper or even like a nail file is good enough to get some. I mean, it would be a nail file you couldn't use ever again after you did this except to do this again. But, you know, that would be okay. Wouldn't hurt anything really then the fact you couldn't use it again for anything except for this but you know just a household thing I mean when you get finished with it I mean you, it's something you gotta throw throw away eventually so get ready to throw it away you can do this everybody has a pencil that and a bowl I just use this little metal cup because I found this little condiment dish and I was like that thing is perfect for this so I got it perfect to hold the um, stuff in and a paintbrush or I mean you might not have a paintbrush in your house use your finger just dip your finger in it and brush it around um looks better with the paintbrush though it looks a little more um natural instead of like your finger where you can see where you've been pushing it around deliberately um, let's go ahead and get the fuel tank more time and I didn't get the air cylinders on this side so we'll go ahead and get those and um, I'm going to pick it up and give it, it an inspection real quick, make sure it's what I want it to be. So I'm going to walk over and I'll be right back.
Okay, guys, um, I'm happy with it. I think it looks really good. Um, I think it's time to... Um, there's a few things I want to touch up real quick. I still got a good bit of graphite. I want to get it really good right through here. Looks like it's still got some green in there. Which, I mean, green's okay. It is a green locomotive, but... That spot just didn't look as nicely weathered, and I'm not... I wish these would get... A little dirtier. <clears throat> Get the back again. I think I'm brush some through there. And then get that really good right there. And now I'm going to take the camera off the little stand I have. I'm going to put it on the layout. I'll be right back, and then I'll come get the camera. I can still talk. I'm just walking right over here. Um, I think it turned out really good. I'm going to put it in a nicer spot on the layout and get the camera. There we go. This rubber band is what was um, holding the camera on this. This is the stand that I built. I'm going to take the... This is what I was had over the camera flash. I just put the phone in there, and then the rubber band holds it around this, and then there's, there's two batteries down there that weight the bottom to keep it from tipping over. Walk around here to the layout. As you can see, the camera is really picking it up and really showing it off, which is, I mean, good. I think it looks really, really nice, and this is a really good picture of it and I would say it looks really good I mean the camera is not picking it up as well as I wish it would and it's a little too dark to just do that but you can see that it's there I might touch up the front end a little bit you know what I mean in real life it looks a lot better than it is and I mean that's about it um so I can get a whole overview of it and that side is going to be like impossible to get but I think it looks pretty good especially the BN logos I'm really happy with how the logos turned out and I'm gonna get, bring that up a little bit and that's about it guys um really happy with it and that's the dash 8 I did it the same way that's how I get the black grills and how it looks like it is. Um, the other Dash 8 right there is Gino Custom Model, which is pretty cool, too. Bring it out here so I can do one nice little overview and get a good look at it myself. I mean, here it is. It looks kind of weird, like I said, when... um how the camera picks up the graphite, I mean, it actually picks it up a little more than it, than it really is. I mean, it's actually, it's defining it a little more than my eyes are. On the top, it almost looks dusty, which is exactly the goal. And that's about it. And these grills are really nice and see-through. I mean, if you can see the blue or the gold down in there, you're actually seeing um, the wires inside there. And then those have tape over them on, from the other side, so you can't see in. And then you can actually see into the locomotive through the door. That's the cab figure that's in there. But you can also see them from the front end sometimes if you get it right. But, okay, guys. Um, thanks for watching. I'm out.